Welcome, welcome to the beautiful share. We are here live in Brooklyn, New York, the Lubavitcher Rebbe's House of Prayer, 770 Eastern Parkway. But really, we're in my house. But I'd like to say we are actually going to be listening to one of the greatest um, psych psychologists and rabbis of our times who is 25 years, been helping people in their marriages, and is going to teach us how to use Tanya on a practical level. And it's going to be inspirational. So let's all listen. Share, share, share. Donate to NoahIsTheWay at gmail.com or you could donate to paypal.me slash Chabad House and all money, just write for the, the share. We're going to be able to make this worldwide, God willing. We want to get a TV show. So just please donate. Without further ado, the rabbi. Good evening, everyone. We'll start again. Um, we are just coming out of the month of Tishrei. In the month of Tishrei, we learn something very important. This is the most condensed time space period. Time and space are measured with, with a, one by one or the other. That we spend a lot of time together. Whether it's Rosh Hashanah, where people come together in the shul to ask for a favorable judgment in, your, in the Day of Judgment. Whether it's Yom Kippur, we're all asking for forgiveness. And the shoes are packed. Or whether it's the sukkah that we all huddle together in this little hut that reminds us a life is just passing. Moreover, the most important part of Tishrei is that feeling of oneness. Within it, there is our great God delight, which resides especially in the sukkah. And then, in the last two days, we danced our hearts out to show Hashem how we're happy just to be within His world and how grateful we are for everything He does because that's the power of happiness. Today I'm going to tell you, to announce to you what it is that I came here to America to do and I call it the Oasis for the Soul. Since so many of us are in the desert, lost spiritually and otherwise, this is a very important thing. The Oasis also will contain two attributes. One, people who want to have treatment can do it directly to me through the uh, access which will be available sometime soon. Or watch a lecture that deals with their issue. And the other side will be just plain knowledge to those who don't feel they need any treatment but are interested to understand the time and the period which we're living according to Chassidus. Moreover, since we are dealing with a lot, a lot of issues, and the more I'm here, the more I run into issues, especially on the issue of marital discord, and issues between parents and children around education and the guidance of how to live. Therefore, it's very important to understand that knowledge of the inner workings of the soul is crucial to find a way to live well, or if there is a need in a spiritual healing, to have a spiritual healing. The most important thing is, therefore, to understand the following. And the following is... In the Tanya where we are now, in the Tanya where we are now, at the end of chapter 2, and the Alter Rebbe explains there, that if a person cleaves cleaves to the sages, to the Talmidei Chachami, to the learned people, and one can tell a learned person by the light on their faces. In other words, it means that the person who has inner content, it says, Chokmas Adam Ta'ir Panav, the light that comes within, who shows on his face, this is extremely important to cleave to our guide, to our leaders, to our Ruchni leaders, to our rabbis and our Rebbe's and that's a dikim, because this way, when the person is attached to them, never mind how low his or her knowledge is or practice of Judaism is, by cleaving to those sages, such as the Rebbe and his predecessors until back way to the Alter Rebbe, the Mazur Chemagid and the, and the Baal Shem Tov, by cleaving to these people, I mean cleaving, it means to stay with them, talk to them, write to them, listen to their directives, then the person can reach the level 
of reuniting and reaching this home the is the, the, the premier the, the premier source of their soul which is in the lofty level of Chokhmah which is the Chokhmah of Hashem where who Hashem is one with his Chokhmah that is to say that through a true connection to a sage a true connection to a Rebbe a person is actually united back to his very source even though he's not at all a learned person he doesn't have the capacity or she doesn't have the capacity to understand those lofty complex uh, complex topics of, of the of the uh, of Hasidus and the inner workings of the soul and it goes to say the thing you have two sides to everything and in parentheses the Alter Rebbe says Vapoy that the person who is rebelling against the sages, his soul will receive from the behind the negative elements from those Tatmidei Chachamim. Which means there is a choice. The choice is to wallow in your own wire, to sit in your own discomfort, Nobody's going to come home and tell you, why aren't you reading Hasidus? Why aren't you listening to talks by the big Hasidic leaders? That's your choice. You can stay feeling downtrodden, lonely, lost, and whatever. Nobody's going to come knocking on your door. Why aren't you doing this and that? Especially not in the United States of America, which is a free country. And unfortunately, it means free to do bad things to oneself. However, there is an option. And this option is to be attached to the Rebbe, to the Hasidic leaders, to the Hasidic ideas, and through them to have a good life. None of us is given the tools to do that except for the leaders. And why is that? Because this is the life where they we're living in the world, and the world, the world, world in Lashon Kodesh means concealed, hidden. One day I had a friend, I mean, I grew up with a guy, and he was always, there's three of us. One of our, my friends is a, a world-renowned expert on Chinese medicine. I mean, heck with you, guy, you're still running marathons in our old ripe age, 57. What a waste, what are you doing with yourself? Anyway, and therefore, and therefore, <clears throat> And therefore, he is absolutely in that world of Chinese medicine, where to press and all this, all to do with the body. The other guy, we all grew up together in Haifa, in Israel, says it's only the material. Nothing else exists. And I say, both exist. The neshama and the body are one. They parallel each other. What I mean to say is like that. This guy comes to me. Now, uh, we're friends. I mean, um, I'm a little heavy, but he became a little uh, beach ball. You know, he's working, he's got them managing this department, that department. But he doesn't have much in his life. He says to me, give me a proof that there is a God. Something like attainable to me. I said, I have a question to you. How can it be that air around us is suddenly hot? Suddenly mild and suddenly cold and suddenly freezing. How does it happen? He couldn't answer me. He says there's all kinds of uh, like stoves and ovens that cause raining could have, could em emulate the effect of creating clouds and rain. I said to him, but how does it happen? How does the air changes? Once it's drier than dry, few minutes later is soaking, soaking wet. One part of the year it's hot, you, it's almost unbearable. And part of the year it's so cold, it's almost unbearable. It has to be controlled by some kind of an element. I have to say this guy had to think about it for a few days. But in the end he came to the conclusion that Hashem runs the world and there is something that controls how the air changes. 
This is a minor example. But what we are talking about is well-being of a person. And the situation that I see around me is dire. You understand what he's saying? People. D I R E. D I R E. You know what that means? Bad. It's a bad situation. See, I'm paying attention to you. Wait. Oh, his phone died. <laughs> so we have the recording at least. Oh, you see? You see? Oh, it's good to have. Mashiach will be recording. Yeah, five minutes, you know, sure. whatever. People can watch the five minutes live. Listen, I told you, there's five, seven hundred and, and eighty views from the last year. Oh, yeah. We are now coming to the point. The point is the choice is yours. And how can you say the choice is yours? I mean, what do you mean? What are you talking about? I'm just feeling lousy. I'm feeling bad. Rabbi, what are you talking about? I have bills. I have troubles. My ex-wife, my ex-this, my ex-that, my ex-cat. Everybody's upsetting me. You open the door. It's so hot. You can't get out. You go and you're on your ends. The rain falls on your head. You go to the office. It's closed. You have an argument with your business partner. Everything seems to be swirling and swirling and swirling like a typhoon in my life. Where is that healthy thinking? Where is my healthy being going to come from? The Tanya says to you practically, there is an answer. The answer is to be attached to a Hasidic leader. To attach... So i give you a simple example. When I was... Um, I don't know if I was guarding on, uh, in, in Israel in the Talmud Torah, which is called general Hasidic, all kinds of Hasidic streams. The, the headmaster, a very nice fellow, said, you know, I want you to sit here, and was paying me, and take me to all kinds of outings they went on, just so the kids to see a learned person sitting and learning. He says, your influence on them. Sitting here will influence them more than any lectures you can give to a larger crowd. And why is that? Because when a person is truly connected to Hashem, or is in the process like I am, working on it, trying his best or her best, it shows and affects other people too. Moreover, I had this guy come and ask me, Rabbi, my my wife and I don't get along. Say, so could you give me a detail? And it's very important for people to hear. He says, yes. She yells. And I can't stand yelling. I said, hold it. You just stop right in. That's very important. That's the whole purpose of this, what I call the oasis for the soul. Why is your wife for yelling? I tell you. I told you. No. You bring it back. <laughs> the more the, they say she's only yelling, I told him under one situation. Where her mother is speaking to her on the phone. He says, Rabbi, you never been to my house. How do you know that? And you were yelled at as a child so much. You can't hear yelling. You separated for an issue which is minor and could be easily corrected. Therefore, it's very important to be attached to the Rebbe, to learn his teachings. And I say to everyone, including myself, you have a hard day, we have hard days, these days and age. It's the footstep, foothills of Mashiach. And the hill of Mashiach, this is the lowest level. And everyone, almost ex inclusively, is going through something. I heard a guy I know, he had a situation where he, somebody in the family decided that he did something wrong. He sat in jail. He has an order of a, 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 a detention. He can't go there. Protection. There. Order of protection. Order of protection. He can't go to his home. Another guy, his wife suddenly, after all these years, snapped. They're divorced. I went somewhere to help somebody over the hug. They're separated. It's unbelievable. Yeah, it's unbelievable. Wonderful. People are searching, you and your ADD, <laughs> so people are searching for the wrong way in the right as things in the wrong way. Breaking is not going to fix something. This is only when you turn down a house and you build a new one. It does not work in relationship. And therefore, I say to people, 
One advice I give everyone, and it's the best advice of all. Once a day, close your eyes and draw in your mind's eye the face of the Rebbe. And talk to him. Cleave to him. Stay close to him. We all have hundreds of pictures. Some of us have, or, have had this host to see the Rebbe. And some of us are Susus to hear a bracha from the Rebbe. But pictures and videos are all available all over the place. Please use this. Because that's the intention of the Alter Rebbe. When you cleave to the Rebbe, you start seeing things and he starts in his way. Someone came to the Rebbe once, very de 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 distraught. What's the problem? His wife is very upset. So we asked the Rebbe, is that, is that right, that folding the talis in Motzei Shabbos is an omen for Shalom Bais? No, said the Rebbe, you go home, you take off your Shabbos clothes, the English coat, you roll your sleeve up and you wash dishes. That is an omen for Shalom Bais. Why? Because women need to be given the feeling that they are that somebody sees all their work, that somebody sees everything they do, that they are appreciated, all their efforts, and that somebody is participating. A man is not to stay away from the housework. This is not correct. Not just because the woman sometimes just can't handle it because of all these children, or she may be pregnant or what have you, but because it's his home. What I mean is we take the lessons of the month of Tisha when we were together and that's applied in everyday life. It's very easy to sit in the sukkah singing songs when there's a very high godly light residing there. It's very nice to run around together and dance for hours and sing Chastoyer and Shmini Atzeres. But the more it's the important part is to draw these great powerful lights into the daily routine of the month of Marcheshman, which is coming to us for the better. Because the routine, the minute-to-minute -minute behavior, is really where we show Hashem that we serve Him in earnest and we love Him very much. And therefore, it's very important. And one of the things that Itania does not do is avoid all the issues. And therefore, I'm just going to read what it says and explain it as it is. Yeah, One of the things that is most important yeah, in life, it says like that, okay, yeah, that yeah, which is stated in, in the Zohar, in what is called the Zohar Chadash, that the main thing is, that the men, using the male figure, should sanctify himself, his thoughts, in the time of having an intercourse with his wife. Why? Because the women are given to what they, they are. They are here to have children. But okay. if he has a thought that is holy while he is having relation with his wife in holiness, then he can draw a very high neshama. What's the name? And therefore, the most important thing in this issue is the old man should control his mind, have proper thoughts in that time. You could say, what's the matter with you? You're going out of mouth. This is sexual education. Yes. You want to have good children? This is the way to do it. And the Tanya isn't avoiding it. Why the heck should we avoid the reality? If a guy comes home drunk, thinking of all the nonsense, not exactly a modest women he saw, what kind of daughter he's going to have. Huh? It's all in our mind. It's all affecting us the way we all, it has everything to do with the way you eat, the way you are in bed, the way you are when you walk on the street. It's all connected. And therefore the Elder Rebbe tells us yes, there is a situation that even <clears throat> that when a holy person has a holy thought, you will have a holy child. Which is not a which is not the case with the person who doesn't know. But what is the answer for the person who doesn't know? Draw the face of the Rebbe in front of you. There is a story in the Gemara. Everybody loves stories. AD, ADHD, whatever you are. The Rabbi Yochanan was a very, very handsome man. He was a beautiful person. 
when he would, women would go to the mikvah, would sit right across from them, so they can see him and his glory as a teacher of the leader of Israel at the time. He was a very handsome man inside and out, and that will affect positively the children that they will bear, because they saw a holy person and in their, engraved in their mind. This is how it is, because the problem we have, the desert that I mean, that people are in, is the desert of thinking. As the Alter Rebbe said, the Alter the Friediger Rebbe, the previous Rebbe said, the Rebbe Rayat, people in America watch very carefully what they put in their mouth, but not at all what they put in their minds. Today we're flooded with so many incredible amount of stimuli which are all out But people look at the internet, they look at news so-called, it's trending. All of a sudden you're giving someone else's way of what you should be thinking. No, says the Alter Rebbe. You should be thinking about your Torah, about yourself, and about this child you want to have that he should or she should be holy. And when a person does that, it's not just children, it's everything. And therefore it's very important that there is what he says, what the explanation goes on like this. And you should understand this is the most practical guide to life given by the most unique individual ever. The Alter Rebbe had a new soul, which is a, a very unusual situation, so much so that he himself couldn't believe it. A new soul wasn't affected by anything, not only that, he was a tzaddik or a complete tzaddik means he doesn't have to return. He was here for one turn, that's it. And nobody else can say that. I'm not talking about the Rebbe's. They are different kind of, uh, of uh, a level of people. There is not such a thing in anyone, no matter who he or she is, that the soul, the garments of the soul from the very essence of his father and mother, it's only natural. My sister used to say to me, and she still does, it's funny how I sit like my father and how I like laugh like him. What am I supposed to do? This is my father. I'm very much like him in many ways. The levush, the garments, means the body, attributes, and all kinds of things that we naturally, in this world, we see from our parents, some from the mother, from the father. This makes, that makes, it doesn't matter. Therefore, he says, V'chol ha-mitzvos sh'osei ha-kol al yedei o'i so'i levush. And every mitzvah you and I make is through the garment that we see from our parents. And therefore what the parents do in the time that they are together, wanting to have children, is paramount, no less than that. And even the flow that is given everyone, I... <coughs> as that is given to everyone in this physical world, money, health, children, where you are is through this garment that is created by the parents, through the bodies, through the attributes, through the traits, through everything that is directly coming from the parents. That's why Yichus, a person should belong to his dynasty. You look back in the generations and people say, yeah, four generations ago my great-great-grandfather was a great rabbi. And therefore it's very important you always have to be in the video, young lady. <laughs> and therefore it's very important that we read that and we're understanding as it is. Therefore, we have the And if the Father sanctifies themselves in his thoughts before, and somebody asked me, Rabbi, uh, you know, my wife and I are not getting along in this area. I said, Potsman puts parts. My friend, she goes to the mikvah. She dread. Are you washing yourself? Are you going to a shower before she comes home? She's coming home clean, all excited, and you're all smelling like a pig. You have to sanctify yourself. You gotta be right there. No, we're not gonna avoid this segment. And it's very important for people to know. Even says the Alter Rebbe, if the neshama is the neshama, which is a very high and lofty neshama, 
to no end, to the very day, he has to be, he has to come to the sanctification of his, through the sanctification of the mind of his father. Sometimes, he says, a great, great person comes to be a son of a very lowly man. We're not talking about women, mind you. Look, at we're talking about the men. Because the woman will follow the spirit, spiritual place where the man is in everything, most importantly in the times of, <laughs> of making relations. Of, Every week the same little girl shoves her hands here. Okay. And therefore, we are say, understanding that it could be a situation like the Arizal Rabbi Yitzchak Luya wrote in the Kabbalah, and he gives the place Stop. in Vayera and in Bereshis, where the Arizal indicates that. This is the conclusion of chapter 2. So we have a very important thing. Once the person becomes, and it's, sexual relationship is, own, is, not, is the most important thing because it determines how the next generation shall be. Moreover, but it is also part of everything else we do, the way we eat, the way we twist, speak, the way we do. If we sanctify ourselves, meaning we behave according to the instruction of the sages, then first of all we are one with them, Second, there is a result of what we're doing in the physical world is a positive one. People think it may be far-fetched. The rabbi is drunk talking this way. No, it ain't. Truth has been lost for a long time ago. There's no shame and nothing wrong with talking about those issues. Because a lot of the time, a lot of the time we have a lot of problems around propagation. And because minds of people are wandering around, and everyone has their own thoughts and their own wishes. But if we sanctify ourselves and attach ourselves to the Rebbe and the sages, the outcome in everything we'll do, everything inclusively, we'll will be We're holy. Talking about I wish you a new year that will be good and happy and everything will work out in it and take from this lesson everything you can so your life at home and with yourself will be better. All the best.